Working on NPCs, getting the shops all set up and stuff. Anyway, what was. <laughs> what is going on out there? Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. It just. <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of my Let's Play here in the Infinia Realm, hosted by Grayson. We have been steadily working on building the shopping district and main spawn area, getting all the NPC shops up and running so that people can buy enchanted books and gear. So in this episode, I'm going to be going over our progress, show you some builds, and talk about the legendary scuba gear that Meat Plow has obtained. It's really silly and makes me giggle every time I see him wearing it, and it is one of the many additions added by the mods that we use in this realm. It's been a whole lot of fun so far watching people start their journeys in the realm, but I'm really excited to get Spawn, the Nether Hub, and the Shopping District finished so we can really focus on advertising for new players. And with that in mind, if this looks fun and you would like to play with us, simply join my Discord. There's a link in the video description, and from there you can contact the host of this realm and apply to become a member. And since we're still in the early game, we haven't really started advertising or anything yet, so currently there is a space available. But also in this episode, before we get to meet Plow's legendary parkour adventure to obtain his scuba gear, I'll also be going over how exactly I made the commands to summon enchanted books and stuff like that using NPCs in Bedrock. I do have some tutorials on how to make NPC shops using command blocks, but for these I had to get a little customized with it, because in Bedrock you can't actually give the player enchanted items, and this includes enchanted books. But there is a workaround, so stay tuned and don't disappear. I'll go over the commands right after I showcase the builds, but for now I'll switch to music and show off what Grayson and I have been working on. making progress, trying to get the essentials set up so that people can really jump into their journey, especially since at the moment we're not allowed to go to the nether or end, and we're trying to cut down on lag when it comes to farms and village traders, so that's why the first NPC stores are for enchanted books and gear. And one of the mods adds teleportation. You can craft waystones and add them to your list, and then you can teleport in between any waystones that you've added at the cost of experience. So since it costs experience, I made this fountain that you can buy experience from. The Mystical Villager Fountain. <laughs> And not only will I be going over how the NPC shops work, how they give you enchanted gear and enchanted books, but I'll also be going over the commands needed for this experience fountain. So if you think it's cool and you would like to build it in your own world, you will totally be able to do that. And now it's time to go over the NPC shops. Before I go over the commands, I will give you a simple breakdown of how players will interact with the NPCs to buy their gear and enchanted books. Each NPC can sell up to six items, and it will automatically take the payment out of the player's inventory as long as they have it. So clicking on one of the enchantments that you want will take three diamonds out of your inventory and then give you a book. It'll also give you an item frame, and that's part of the workaround that I will show you here in a minute, since you can't actually give the player enchanted gear in Bedrock. And I tweaked the radius limit so that you have to be really close to the NPC in order to purchase things. This is because if you didn't have the payment and you tried to buy it, it might take the payment from someone else who actually has it in their inventory who's nearby. Luckily, you can avoid this by setting custom radius limits. But then this shop right here sells you a full chest of gear. So to give the player a bunch of different items with a single command is totally doable. It's really similar to the workaround for enchanted books, and you could even give the player enchanted gear if you so desire. But clicking on one of the purchases will summon all of the items into this chest. 
And now let's go over the commands to make all these things possible. But if you're not interested in knowing the commands, you can skip ahead using the timestamps. Don't miss out on Meatplow and myself attempting to do parkour in order to obtain scuba gear. It's definitely worth a laugh. But now let's go over the commands. So for the enchanted books, I put them all in an item frame so that we can use the clone command to copy and paste them. But before that, you have an impulse, unconditional, needs redstone with the set blocks, coordinates, air. It's going to turn the redstone block placed by the NPC back into air. The NPC will set a redstone block, which will trigger the command blocks. But after the impulse block, you have a conditional chain block, which will remove the payment from the player's inventory. But first, it will check to make sure the player has enough of that item, which is the has item limiter. But after that, you have another conditional chain block with the slash clone command. This is going to clone the item frame with the enchanted book up near the player so that the player can then collect it. When you clone an item frame into a space with no block, it will immediately break on the floor, thus giving the player an enchanted book, plus an extra item frame. <laughs> and then this last command is totally optional. It is a chain conditional with the slash replace item, and this targets a hopper, and it adds diamonds into that hopper. The reason I did this is so that every time a player purchases something, the diamonds they use to purchase will end up in this chest, so that later on we can use these diamonds for events or other sort of activities. And this also keeps track of how many diamonds have been spent by players. You know, it's really cool to actually be able to see how many diamonds people collect and then use to buy stuff. And that's it for the bookstore commands. You know, it's actually fairly simple, just using the clone command to clone an item frame. And this gear store works similarly. So we have chests that are full of the gear that the players are buying. And then again, we're gonna use the clone command to clone that chest up at the top so that the player can collect their items. The NPC will set a redstone block, activating the command blocks. And the first impulse command will delete that redstone block. Then next up, you have a chain unconditional with the slash clear at P has item limiter to make sure the player has enough payment, then how much the payment is and a radius limit so it doesn't target other players. And the next chain command block is set to conditional with the slash clone, then the coordinates for the chest and then where you want the chest to go. This will effectively clone the chest full of items into an empty chest where the player can then collect their items. Doing it this way means that you could technically put anything in that chest that you want, you know, for the player to purchase. But then finally, we have a chain command block set to conditional with the slash replace item block coordinates, and this will add the diamonds into the hopper that the player used to buy the, the stuff. And that's it for the gear store. You know, it's really similar to the bookstore. You know, all the commands are basically the same. But then for this little diamond collecting system I have right here, the replace item command will target a specific slot in the hopper to replace it with the amount of diamonds that you set. So the reason I have multiple hoppers is so that each machine targets a different slot in the hoppers. So just in case multiple players are buying stuff at the same time, all of the diamonds should still get collected. I've also placed barrier blocks all around these just to make sure that no one can tamper with them. But then finally, for the experience fountain, we have a button up there which will then trigger this repeater, and this repeater will then activate the redstone on top of the command blocks. I used redstone dust on the top of the command blocks because of the way it interacts with the repeating command blocks. But first up, you have an impulse unconditional needs redstone with the slash clear at player radius diamond. You know, so this is what takes the payment from the player. So to get experience, it costs one diamond. And then next up, we have repeat command blocks with the slash summon experience orb command. And it's set to conditional needs redstone. That way that like it just activates over and over and over really quickly as long as it has a redstone signal. And then I just made five of these so that it summons a bunch of experience. And then the very last one is a chain conditional always active that sets another diamond into those hopper systems to be collected. And that's it for the command blocks that I've used so far. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, or you can join my Discord and ask me there. I also have some command block tutorials where I go over the basics, build NPC stores, doors, mini games, how to make quests, and anything else that I can come up with using command blocks. Also, if you have a request, feel free to let me know in the comments, and I will do my best to get it done just for you. And before we get into me dying over and over and over attempting to do parkour, if you like this video, please leave a like, share, favorite, comment, subscribe, all of that other good stuff. It really helps out the video, and it helps me out, and it makes me happy. And welcome to Infinia's very first parkour course. The reason Grayson made this is that Meat Plow really wanted the nether crafting template. And since we're not allowed to go to the nether just yet, the only way that he can obtain one is through one of the creative mode players. 
We didn't want to just give it to him or sell it to him, so we decided to make a parkour course and have him run through it. If he succeeds, he will get the netherite crafting template. Grayson might have to make a few adjustments as we go to prevent cheating and other stuff, but it looks like so much fun, I think I'm going to give it a go as well. So I switched to survival, and I'm going to try to do the parkour course with Meat Plow. Let's see who can finish it first. I really love parkour, but you know, I'm not the best at it. You know, I tend to fall off over and over, you know, but I try my hardest, and it's still a whole lot of fun. It's a little frustrating at times, you know, but parkour is a really fun thing to do. These first few jumps don't seem that bad though. Let's see. Oh, that one's kind of scary but I made it okay Ooh, next up is the slime jump I really like slime jumps they're so fun okay here we go please hit the slime please hit the slime okay Whew, goodness gracious okay I made it let's be sure to to not crouch and just like let me bounce down so I don't take damage and, oh man I hate ladders and parkour okay we just got to get around this corner come on get around the corner come on please okay Whew. Okay, one more corner. I'm not gonna cheat using the bell. Oh my god, I almost fell. Okay, I'm like halfway there. This doesn't seem that bad. I can do this. Okay, okay. Oh man, those skulls do not look fun. We'll just take it slow. You know, one skull at a time. It's just a block. You know, it's just a block. It's, it's okay. Just take it slow and make sure you get the jump. And here we go. Okay. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. And here we go. Oh no, I fell, no, and I didn't set my spawn either, I didn't do the checkpoint. Maybe Meat Plow will do better than I did. You know, I need to actually click on that bed next time. I totally forgot to set a checkpoint. Look at all these corpses though. <laughs> uh, I think the corpses are part of the mod, Better on Bedrock. Um, one of these episodes, I will do showcases for the mods so that you can actually see what all there is in the mods, but that'll be a later episode. For now, I'm just going to keep trying to get through this parkour course. I am determined. I'm going to be a gymnast in Minecraft. This is definitely my favorite part, though. I love falling on the slime. You know, it's so rewarding getting, like, bounced up, and it's so scary on the way down. I do wish that you could crouch on the slime blocks when you're landing and not take fall damage, you know, rather than bouncing over and over, you know, but I hate these ladders. Oh, man, these ladders are so torturous. Like, parkour with ladders is just so hard. But, okay, we made it. Okay, now I'm going to set my spawn this time. I got to remember to do that. That way I can just start from here if I fall again. But I'm not gonna fall again. You know, I'm gonna get it perfect this time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it slow and make sure that I can <laughs> look at all the corpses. <laughs> oh man, uh, they're starting to pile up now. Oh, there goes Meat Plow. It looks like Grayson's gonna start killing us to, to make sure that we go back to our checkpoint. <laughs> Why is this jump so hard? It should be easy. Hey, I made it. Okay, okay, I am making progress. I made it past the really hard part. This part doesn't seem so bad. You know, I can walk on glass. That's all right. This is this is easy. I can do this. And, oh, those fence posts look terrible. Oh, no. Okay, this this, this is okay. It's okay. So, oh, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, goodness. Oh, Grayson, please come kill me so I can go back to the checkpoint. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do it this time. Okay, no failure, no falling. We are going to get this done. You know, I gotta beat Meat Plow, you know, I, I, I gotta be the first one to finish this parkour course. But it looks like, oh good, he fell. Okay, I'm gonna do it this time. Okay, no falling. We can do this, we can do this. Just slow and steady. Just take your time. It's not that bad. Okay, now the really hard jump. We just gotta run as far as we can and then, oh man, oh goodness gracious, this is so, so frustrating. And it doesn't look like I'm having a very successful attempt. I just keep dying over and over and over and over. You know, I'm, it's so hard. Parkour is just so hard. Why, 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 why? Oh my goodness. Why is parkour so addicting? You know, it's so frustrating, you know, but you just want to get it done, you know, and it should be easy. I mean, it's just running and jumping. You know, I run and jump in Minecraft all the time. I even run and jump in real life. You know, it shouldn't be this hard. And I really hate this jump so much. I never want to see another pink carpet in my life. No, come on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it looks like Grayson's tired of killing us. He's going to make us stand on a magma block instead. That's so mean. That like adds insult to injury. Oh goodness. I just can't do this. I've died like 30 times. Why is this so hard? It shouldn't be that hard. Look at all the corpses. Oh man, the corpses are just piling up. Grayson's even been clearing out some of the corpses as we go. And now he's putting down campfires. <laughs> That's so mean. Oh, goodness. But okay, I made it past the hard jump. I can do this. Now if I can just get past these stupid fence posts. 
You know, that it should be smooth sailing after that. I think this is the last little hard section. I just gotta crouch jump. I gotta remember to crouch after I jump. Gotta crouch jump. Okay. Made it on the first one. Okay, now jump and crouch and... Okay, I made it on the second one. Okay, now one more. This one looks really far away. Can you even make that? Oh, God, no. Oh, no, no. Oh. oh, this is just so painful. I just want to do it. I want to get to the end. Like, ah. Uh. I'm not even getting anything out of it. I'm a creative player. You know, I just want to say that I managed to do it. Uh, I'm starting to get better at that, that pink carpet jump, though. I still hate it. You know, it's the bane of my existence. Oh, God, I fell off the glass. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, oh my God, this is so painful. I believe I can fly, please. Oh, thank you. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. Grayson's been clearing out all the corpses, so there's not as many, you know, dead bodies everywhere. You know, okay, we can do this. We can do this. Just these stupid fences. I can do this. Okay, okay. First fence, okay. And then the second fence. Just got a crouch jump. We can do this. And here we go. Okay, okay. One more. I can do this last fence. If I can just do this last fence, it's done. Oh, Meat Plow made it. Good job, Meat Plow. But, oh, I'm sad that I didn't get there first. <laughs> but I'm right behind you. I'm going to make this jump. And then it'll be smooth sailing, and... No, no, I can't believe I did that. Oh my god, no. No, I jumped again. Okay, I quit. I quit. I give up. I can't do it. I, I admit defeat. Meat Plow, you are the god of parkour. And you now have a really hilarious, like, long scuba... Scuba goggles gear thing? I don't even really know what that is. Uh, I think it gives you, like, infinite breathing, though, like, underwater, and... <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It kind of looks like a laser beam whenever he does that. It's just, it's so spectacular. I love it. Oh, goodness. It's just so ridiculously long, like... Oh. Okay, but anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. You know, Meat Plow's gonna run away with his prizes now. He can finally get netherite. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Or if you didn't, leave a comment and let me know why. I'm always trying to improve my video making, so your criticism might really help me out. Consider subscribing for redstone tutorials, command block tutorials, build videos, and much, much more. If there's anything that you would like to see, just let me know and I will try to get it done just for you. But that's all we got for this episode. Tune in next time where I'll go over some more builds like Grayson's giant spawn mushroom or the nether hub that I've been working on. But that's all we got, so until next time, I've been your host, Omeletu, hopefully teaching you a Minecraft trick or two, and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.